10 years after the longest and one of the greatest Grand Slam finals in history, 5 years after the epic return of Fadal. Roger Federer is out, Nadal has just returned, Djokovic has only just got into the country, the next gen are out for blood, who will win the Australian Open 2022? Be sure to follow me on Twitter at FootfallPod for random statistics, discussion and channel updates. If you want random clips, questions, discussion and sneak previews for my latest videos, check out my TikTok, the links are in the description. I am a lover of statistics, but I don't just want to list off numbers all day. There are three main categories I will use to help determine my favourites for the title. They are the top 8 seeds for the tournament, the top players in the race to Turin, and recent form on the surface being played on. They will help determine power rankings, among other things. Then I will go through the draw and apply these rankings as I go, revealing my quarterfinal lineups and eventual champion, as well as a few dark horses and popcorn matches. Be sure to tell me your thoughts down below. Our top 8 seeds are Kasper Ruud, Matteo Berrettini, Rafael Nadal, Andrei Rublev, Stefanos Tsitsipas, Alexander Zverev, Daniel Medvedev and Novak Djokovic. For the first slam of the year this is a bit of a pointless one as it correlates with who's in recent form, but it's usually quite fun to see who's managed to sneak in. Our top 8 are Karen Hashinov, Dan Evans, Gael Monfils, Rafael Nadal, Denis Shapovalov, Daniel Medvedev, Felix Auger Aliassim, and Roberto Batista Agu. Who are our inform players? Well, so far there have been five tournaments. Two have not yet finished, but they are Hashinov, Kokinakis, Roberto Batista Agu, Nadal, Monfils, Medvedev, Chapo, and FAA. With all that being taken into consideration, among many other factors, what are my power rankings? Before I start, there are four players I want to look out for in the draw. Murray, of course, he's had some horrible luck in draws, but his consistency improved last year and can be a dangerous round one opponent for any top player. Kokinakis, whenever he's not injured, he's a threat, and he's doing well and it's his home tournament. Cressy, of course, serve and volley are fun and fresh. Lastly, Safulin, who played some great tennis at the ATP Cup and is now in qualifying, so he's getting in good matches. Perhaps another Karatsev story. Who knows? But at number 8, Shapovalov. He hasn't been beyond the third round, but played a couple good matches last week. The courts are usually faster, and he's a powerful player. Number 7, Berrettini. He had quite an underrated season last year. He made three quarterfinals at the Slams, including the Wimbledon final, and a fourth round here last year too. He lost to Djokovic three times and pulled out before facing Tsitsipas. My only concern is he's prone to injuries, and also not many matches were played at the ATP Cup. At number 6, Rafa. At the end of the day, we're talking about one of the greatest of all time, but he's played one tournament. Won it, but against lower ranked players. We don't know how he'll do yet versus the top guys. These next two spots were difficult to fill. Essentially, I don't think they're going to win, but I think they can pull off an upset at their best. It's more whether they can get there. Number 5 is Sinner. And 4, FAA. Felix, I would hope, has been given a confidence boost after kind of winning his first title, but not really. Up next, Zverev. I'm really confident in Zverev this season. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know what I've predicted him to do, but I don't think it's here. These top three are in their own separate category from the rest right now, however. At number two is Medvedev, which leads me to number one, Djokovic. I am scared. If all is good, and he is for sure playing, Djokovic is going to have a chip on his shoulder. When this man has something to prove, he is scary. Of course, he's had less than ideal prep, so I also wouldn't be surprised with an upset. 
but if we remember last year, he won the thing, literally injured for 3 or 4 matches, and if he meets Medvedev again, he doesn't have the same pressure he did in the US. That being said, Medvedev has now forced him to change styles when they play against each other. That's how good the Russian is now. If this video isn't your cup of tea, check out when Federer dominated the Big Four, or perhaps when Federer first met Nadal. If you want something different, check out Novak Djokovic, the comeback king. How he keeps beating Federer when down match points. Right, let's take a look at the draw then. Bear in mind qualifying hasn't yet finished. Who do I have making the quarterfinals? Djokovic has a fairly easy start, but then we have the classic Berrettini, Zverev, Medvedev run to the finals. He has a possible Sonego and Monfils in there, but realistically, not an issue. Berrettini has Nakashima in the first round, who seems to turn up every now and again and then disappears. In round 3, he could well have Alcaraz. I could see this being an upset. Alcaraz is on an upwards trajectory, but for now I'm putting my faith in the Italian. On to the fourth round, he could have any number of people. Karenia Busta, Fanini, Korda, but I have Nori. Moving on to Zverev. Zverev, I think, has quite a decent draw. No one really poses a threat in the first three rounds. The fourth, he could have Shapovalov or an Opelka, and in the quarters, I have him beating Nadal, losing eventually to Medvedev. Speaking of Rafa, he's an unknown for me. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out in the second to Kokinakis or Hashinov or Karatsev. I almost put her catch in his place, but thought he'd find a way before simply being outclassed by Zverev. This is where it gets interesting. Sinner. First round, a qualifier. Always dangerous. Second, an Australian. Always dangerous. Third, Basilashvili or Murray, who beat him last year in Stockholm always dangerous. In the fourth is Rude or maybe Ivashka, Musetti or Di Minore. His quarterfinal opponent I'm really not sure on, but I do think he has a great opportunity here in Australia. Grigor Dimitrov. Every now and again I put my faith in you and I am never rewarded. Let's change that. The third round he could have Tsitsipas, who I don't think is fully fit just yet. He took some time outside the ATP Cup, and to be honest, I just don't feel confident in him since the French Open last year. That being said, it could all be over for Grigor in the fourth round to Fritz, TFO, RBA, or any number of qualifiers in that section. The final two spots go to Felix Auger Aliassime and Daniel Medvedev. For Felix, he could have some trouble with Rusevori, Fakina, Evans, Poprin, Chilich, Rublev, and again, any number of qualifiers. He's 3-0 against Chilich and 2-0 versus Rublev, but I think it's about time we see some consistency from him. Medvedev has a tough one, but I have faith. Kyrgios in the second round. Oof. He's not yet played a match this season, and I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls out altogether. Umber maybe in the third, who just beat the Russian at the ATP Cup, and Isner, Cressy, or Schwartzman in the fourth. Medvedev is 3-0 against Felix, and also Sinner, putting him into the final versus Djokovic, where I think both have something to prove this time. Djokovic wanting to show this is his slam, and that he's still on top no matter what happened in the US, and Medvedev not wanting to be embarrassed like last year. Upset alerts are defined as this, an unseeded player beating a seeded player in the opening few rounds. There's a few, Monfils and Bublik, Nori Korda, Rude Ivashka, Dimonor Musetti, Basilashvili Murray, and Isna Cressy. There's probably only two there that I wouldn't be massively surprised if they happened, and that's Nori Korda and Basilashvili Murray. In fact, I don't really even class that as an upset if Murray wins. Popcorn matches are those that you mustn't miss in the opening few rounds. They are Monfils and Bublik the second round, Nori Korda first round, Alcaraz Fuksovic second round, Nadal Kokinakis second round, Basilashvili Murray first round, Dimitrov and Pear second round, Medvedev and Kyrgios second round, especially that Medvedev and Kyrgios match. Dark Horses are unseeded players who have a shot at going deep in the tournament. There's not really anyone unseeded I have going far. Murray can, he can beat Sinner, he can beat Rude, but I think in 5 he won't. Maybe Ivashka, Pear, Ymir. I can easily see Dimitrov not taking advantage and going out early, otherwise every single person in my 4th round is seeded. 
but that leaves our semi-finalists. I think this is a great chance for Sinner, and so I have him losing in the semi-finals to Daniel Medvedev, leaving the other final spot to Djokovic defeating Zverev in the semis also. The eventual winner I am predicting Djokovic, but I've just seen he very much might not even be in the country by the time this video goes out. So Medvedev, if you mess this up, it's on you. If you want to see my full draw, check out the draw challenge down below.